Hi, today we will discuss the answer for question number 17 that I have given you yesterday and at the end of the class I would give you question number 18 for you to write for tomorrow. So the question number 17 is, you can pause and go through the question. Well, it says that India is arguing that UNSC, United Nations Security Council has to be reformed to make it more credible, more effective and efficient. This statement given. And then the question is, discuss the impediments, means obstacles that India is facing in becoming a permanent member at UNSC. As you know, at UNSC there are five permanent members and India wants to join that group of uh, permanent members. So this comes under international organizations, general studies paper 2. Not all UNSC, basically we need democratization of the international organizations like World Bank, IMF along with UNSC. So questions can come in the direction. So for this question what you have to do is, you take the first statement given, explain the meaning of the statement. You can say what are the arguments, what are the various arguments that India is putting forward for reforming the UNSC. Also you can say what do you mean by credible, why UNSC is not credible, why it is ineffective, inefficient. You can write that as introduction. Then you can go to the actual question asked. You can say what are the obstacles for India to become UNSC permanent member. But before that you may have to spend one paragraph writing basically why India is eligible to become permanent member. First you have to mention why India is eligible to become permanent member. Then you can say what are the obstacles in becoming a permanent member. So let us explain the statement, first statement given. What are the India's arguments to reform UNSC? India says that at present UNSC does not have the credibility because when it was formed in 1945, it kept in the mind of the the, the times of 1945. In 1945, based on those times geopolitical and economic aspects, the P5 members have become the permanent members. However, now in 2020, the contemporary geopolitics and economics have completely changed. The GDP ranking also, the countries have completely changed. The ranking in 1945 was different and now it is different. Similarly, there is no credibility for UNSC because it is undemocratic. For example, if we look at the world, it is, it is representing only two continents. For example, basically drawing a world map is not really required, but if you can draw in 10 seconds, you can just show. You can say that, see Africa, Saudi Arabia, India, Europe, Australia, you know, South America, Central America, North America, Greenland. You can simply say, USA is a member, then you know, France is a member, France is a member, then, then you know, UK is a member, UK is a member, then China is a member, and then Russia is a member. So if you look at, there is no uniformity, there is no geographical uniformity. Clearly there is no representation for some continents like entire South America, there is no country, entire Africa, there is no country, entire Asia, leaving the, uh, the Russia as a part of Eurasia, take this as Asia, only China and no Australia. So basically there is no equal representation to all the continents, hence it is undemocratic, hence there is no credibility for UNSC, you can, you can say that. And also it is not effective, UNSC is not effective because the veto power which is given to the permanent members of UNSC, the veto power has to be used for the global good. The veto power initially was given to the members so that if four countries make any decision in a hurried fashion, the fifth country can stop it. But now this veto power is misused by these P5 countries. For example, USA always uses the veto power to save Israel. Even when Israel does something in Palestine, it saves Israel. Similarly, Russia is using the veto power to save the Syrian government. Syrian government. Similarly, China is using veto power for Pakistan or to, to not punish Pakistan for terrorism. In that way, every country is using veto power for their selfish reasons rather than the global good. In that way, the UNS is not working effectively. That's why India is suggesting that the veto power shall be restricted, restrained only for few circumstances. Then coming to efficiency. Friends, see, credibility, effectiveness, efficiency are the terms given in the question. 
that's why you have to write the answer in the direction basically in the answer you have to use the terms given in the question so the evaluator will feel that you are addressing the question exactly even if it's not exact even then you try to use those terms so that it will be easy for evaluator to understand your answer because you always see whether your answer is relevant to the question given now you can say unsc is not efficient because for example there are certain global problems like climate change terrorism public health maybe during the pandemic like covid 19 whatever public health so in this kind of or you know the uh, uh, another financial problems how to solve the financial problems globally so while dealing with this kind of problems even cyber security also while dealing with this kind of problems there is no unanimity there is no unanimity among the p5 countries every country has their own plan so they are unable to come with a common agenda that is why we can say unsc is inefficient in fact inefficient so now the actual question asked is what are the impediments for india to become permanent member but before explaining that you have to simply say in how paragraph you have to say why india is eligible to become permanent member and this is not a part of the question that is why don't spend much time and space on it just highlight the main points or you can simply draw a diagram and leave it even evaluator will not look for explanation of this one evaluators always look for the question that is asked so this is just a correcting paragraph correcting paragraph so just finish it in half paragraph or just draw a diagram you can say india is eligible because india has almost 1/6 of the global population so we have to represent the world we we have the authority similarly india is the fifth ranking in gdp in 1945 when usa formed india is not economically strong but now india is economically strong and india is the largest democracy large democracy and you know democracy is the best form of political system globally accepted by united nations and india is the largest contributed for united nations peace keeping force particularly most used in africa to keep peace similarly among all the developing countries india can be called as a leader because we are fast growing fast growing also our association with united nations is credible is very good because we are one of the founding members of united nations and we follow all the principles of united nations like democracy similarly we are already invited to become permanent member of unsc by both russia i mean soviet union at the time and usa both of them invited us but at the time we do not want the polar world so we represent all the developing countries and undeveloped countries in those days that's why we followed the non alignment movement that is why we rejected their offer to become the unsc permanent member that means see, we are all invited it actually clearly shows that india is eligible similarly uh, as there are elections to become non permanent member india has won eight times elections to become non permanent member which says that globally all countries accept india to be a part of unsc unsc similarly in those days when p5 countries were formed they were the nuclear powers that was one of the reasons and india is now a nuclear power equal to the p5 countries so we are no less than the p5 countries in fact we are better than them similarly india is member of almost all multilateral export control regimes multilateral export control regimes like see nuclear security group we are not a member other than that the wasnar arrangement the australian group and then the mtcr missile technology control regime in all these uh, uh, regimes we are member so it gives us authenticity to become permanent member similarly india has a independent foreign policy right from beginning we are never leaned either towards usa or ussr or now the russia we always took independent stance in the foreign policy so for example libya for example recently in the bombing of libya india rejected it even we did not vote for it in the united nations in that way there are various reasons why india has to become permanent member now come to the actual question what are the various obstacles for india see i i have kept the side heading as impediments because it is suggested that in upsc while writing the answers you use the same terms given in the question in the question they ask you what are the impediments in the answer also you write impediments only so that for evaluator it will be easy to understand your answer okay one of the block one of the uh, road block is india is poor in the social indicators in the human development index and and then you know the violence is more in india and you can say the poverty is more in india poverty so globally it is not accepted that a country which unable to eliminate the poverty could become unsc permanent member it is not acceptable for some countries 
so in that way we are poor in social indicators in the you know in the gender equality for example india still has a very low child sex ratio high malnutrition due to these reasons india is looked at as a undeveloped country of course a developing country but in social indicators we are looked at as underdeveloped country because some of the indicators are even worse than sub saharan african countries in that way one of the, one of the obstacle second thing is kashmir the in india is unable to solve the kashmir issue easily so the world is looking at india as a country which could not solve its internal problems similarly g4 see india of course india is trying to become a permanent member independently but along with that india is trying to go with a group called g4 g4 means india brazil germany japan four countries together are fighting to become fighting means uh, internationally they are arguing to become permanent members so as we are going with these other three countries here lies the problem see brazil has competition argentina germany is has competition from spain and italy also even japan has competition from south korea so these three countries is difficult for them to become a member of uh, unsc because the competing countries are also strong countries only south korea italy argentina strong countries india the competing country is pakistan but pakistan is not at all comparable with india the economy of pakistan is not even equal to economy of mumbai so in that way india is better off but as we are going with other three countries and other three countries are blocked by the competitors hence india is also blocked that is the problem that's why it's better not to go with g4 countries we can argue with g4 countries but better to go independently for the for to become the permanent member similarly one of the arguments that many countries raise is that india did not sign nuclear non proliferation treaty so there is a fear that india can proliferate the nuclear weapons that is why some countries are not supplying the nuclear uh, material to india uranium to india even india is not did not sign refused to sign comprehensive trust plan treaty at the time we refused to sign due to these reasons some con- some countries do not have trust on india but actually india is the most responsible nuclear power everybody knows it coming to china china is the biggest obstacle for india to become permanent member why because china is completely always continuously vetoing india whenever it comes whenever on the table the india's membership comes china vetoes it china always vetoes it so why because china has border problems with india and china is doing proxy war with india in sri lanka and in maldives and also china is all weather friend of pakistan so china wants to look at pakistan india in the same light but that is bad because we should dehyphenate we should dehyphenate india with pakistan because there is no comparison with india and pakistan so anyhow china is vetoing also china other issues like dalai lama issue was there you may be know in 1962 war of china also war with china india war with china so another reason is india is dependent in defense equipment manufacturing on russia israel usa that means most of the weapons india is manufacturing come from abroad we are importing it so we are not you know technologically or uh, defense wise we are not uh, independent we are dependent so there are the various reasons cited to not make india a permanent member okay finally how do you conclude this kind of questions see you have to conclude in two ways one thing is you can say how india is trying to become member you can say as a g4 grouping we are trying as l69 see india is trying not only to expand the permanent membership but also non permanent membership as of now non permanent members are also less so india wants to expand them with the help of l69 grouping similarly whenever you can see whenever there is a foreign visit of indian prime minister president whatever you can always see they always ask the other country to which they are going to to accept india to become a permanent member in unsc that's why whenever india goes to russia or any other country they say in the final calling they say that we support india to become a permanent member like there almost 80 countries of 80 members of united nations almost 80 states 80 countries accepted india to become a permanent member okay now you can conclude you can always conclude with the benefits if india becomes permanent member what are the benefits that we will get so the first benefit is right now we are following the rules framed by somebody else we are just a stakeholder but if you become a member you will become one of the global rule makers and india is eligible to become global rule maker second thing is china is a formidable threat so to face china 
the only way is you have to become a member of UNSC permanently. Also, to solve the Kashmir issue, whenever Kashmir issue comes on the table of UNSC, China is sidelining it. So, if India becomes a member, India can actually solve the Kashmir issue once for all. Okay, friends, Let's, uh, I will give you the 18th question for which you can write the answer and submit tomorrow. This is the 18th question. It is regarding the independent Fizzle Council that India has to create, which is a part of Indian economy, General Studies Paper 3. Okay, friends, thank you.